Hi, and welcome to another video on UiPath with me, Yebe. In this one, we're taking a look at computer vision. And that's the technology that UiPath has built to let us automate remote applications. So let's get to it. So if you're used to working with automations that run on applications on your local machine, then you're used to fairly easily be able to find the selectors that you need to interact with. Uh, I have an example here. This is just an online form that I want to fill out. And if I go into my UiPath uh, Studio, this is just a new blank project. If I drag in a normal click activity, you can see that when I indicate on screen, I can select all of these fields and buttons and what have you. Now, if I cancel out of this and then go to this window, which is a remote desktop with the same browser window open with the same page in it, if I want to automate that, using the same click activity, all I can do is I can click the window. I cannot click each of the fields and the buttons and what have you, because what is transmitted from the remote desktop to my computer here is just an image. So that's going to limit very much what you can do. So what UiPath did is they built this thing called computer vision. And what that does is it looks at the screen as if it was a human. And that means it will identify the objects that you would like or that you would typically like to interact with. It's not perfect, I'm not going to say that, but it's getting quite good and it's getting better because it's based on some machine learning AI magic uh, that improves over time. Also because you as a developer can give feedback to UiPath right here in studio, telling them what elements are you having trouble identifying in computer vision. So let's try and work with this a little bit in a simple example. So I'll just uh, cancel out of this. Let me go into the, I'll just copy and paste the URL here and close the browser inside of my remote session. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go to our orchestrator. And inside of orchestrator, if you go to the admin page, to your licenses, to the robots and services tab, then you will have somewhere a computer vision API key. And you'll need to copy that. Then inside studio, and I'll just delete my click event here. Then you will, uh, if you search for CV, and that's short for computer vision, then you'll get all the computer vision activities here. And the first thing you want to work with is a screen scope. And that's very similar to how you work with Excel scopes and things like that uh, when automating normal applications. You'll need to agree to the terms and conditions. I do. And then in the properties here, you'll need to enter the API key that we just copied from uh, orchestrator. Also, you'll need to enter the name of a server, and that server is by default the cv.uipath.com. And the reason why you need to do that is whenever you work with computer vision, whatever the computer is seeing on your screen is sent to the server where it is evaluated, and then it returns a result to you showing what elements can you interact with. I'll do that now so you can see it. It works quite well. So, and uh, what I want to work with is, of course, this remote desktop. So I'll need to know what can we click on inside of this remote desktop. So we'll indicate on screen our computer vision scope. And that is now sent to the server that we just entered. And we get back a screenshot if we double click here on the thumbnail, indicating what elements can we interact with on our screen. This is a screen scope, as they call it. And we can see that our Chrome icon here is available. So I'll cancel out. And then I'll insert a computer vision click activity here. And then I'll indicate, not on the screen, but in the scope, what is it I want to work with. Well, it's this icon that was identified by the first analysis. So I'll click that. I'll change it to a double click. And if we just run it just for fun, we'll see that it uh, actually does open my Chrome browser now. And we'll just go back to the window and see that it actually did. So the next thing we want to do is we want to go to a certain URL. So computer vision has a number of activities, and one of them is the type into activity. I'll just add that. I'll set a short delay here between keys just to make it go a little bit faster. And then we'll indicate on the scope where is it we want to enter the URL. Now the URL we want to enter, I have here in my little notepad, that is this page that we saw before with the form on it. And I will indicate on our scope 
where do we want to enter this text? And as you just saw, the, the browser window disappeared because the browser window or what was on the screen after we opened the browser has not been defined in a screen scope yet. So what we can do is we can do refresh scope. Before we do that, we'll note up here that it says screen one of one. Once I do a refresh scope, it'll take a picture of this browser window, send that to the server, get an analysis back. And if we show the elements of this analysis, we can see now that we have new elements to interact with as long as we select the screen two out of two. We can browse back and forth between the different defined screen scopes, but this is the one we want to work with. So we'll click the address bar up here, and it seems to be a little bit confused by that. So we can define an anchor, and we'll just use the plus sign as an anchor. And now it knows to type the URL into the right field. So we'll go back to our screen, close the browser, and run it once more. And hopefully we'll see it open the browser and go to the correct page. And I can say right now that it didn't because I forgot one thing, and that is to add an enter hotkey after the URL. So now if we go to the uh, browser and hit enter, then it goes to the correct form. So now we want to enter my first name into the first name field, and we want to, for example, select an option from this drop down list. We'll select the type into field again. The text I want to enter is my first name, and I'll indicate on scope but we don't have that new page in our scope yet. So again, we need to refresh the scope. We can see that now this is the third screen out of three. We can show the elements that are available to interact with. And luckily, the first name field was one of them. So I'll just click that. And now it'll type the first name into that field. Let's do another click event. Now we have the scope. So we'll click on this drop-down list. What will happen when I click the drop down list is, of course, if I switch to the scope, is that it'll open. And then I'll need to select whatever option I want to select. Now, there is actually in computer vision a drop down select activity that works with some web pages and some applications, but not with all. So I like to use the old fashioned method where I first do a click activity to actually unfold the drop down list, and then I'll do another click event, indicate on scope. And then I'll use the F2 button to delay the actual selection. And then it gives me time to open the drop down list. And now it will give me the option. And I'll select support inquiry here. And then just uh, as a final activity, we'll show a message box saying done. And that'll just be just to pause it so it doesn't skip back to UI Studio all the time. If I go to my remote session, close the browser, run it again. We'll see it open, go to the correct URL, hit enter, enter the first name into the first name field, open the drop down list and select the right support inquiry option, and then display my message box saying done. Now, what it did in the background that we maybe didn't notice is that because I used this drop down list and used the delay function, the F2 button, when defining my selector, what it did is if I uh, go to indicate on scope here again, it actually created a fast scope, and that's a scope containing the content of the drop down list. So it has some intelligence and some quite nice features built in. And really, you can get a long way with using computer vision when automating remote screens, whether through remote desktop or I'm using something called AnyDesk, maybe through Citrix or something like that. Now, there's one more activity that I'd like to show you. So we're back in studio, and I'm just going to clear basically everything we just made. And I'm going to insert a new screen scope activity. And luckily, it remembers the API key and the URL. And then we'll uh, select what scope is it we want to work with. Before we do that, we're going to go into the remote session, open a browser, and we're just going to search for something. Let's uh, search for car data table. This is just a table with some car data in it. I don't even know what it is. So we'll just go to pictures and we can uh, we can maybe find a nice table with some car data in it. Let's uh, let's look at this one. So this this looks like an image that has some fairly OK data. Let's see. 
Now the fonts are a little blurry, but we'll we'll try and see if it works. So um, I haven't tried this image before, so I, I really don't know. But what we'll do is we'll go back into our studio. We'll indicate the screen on the scope. This is the remote desktop that we're trying to automate. And then when it's done doing that, in just a second, we will use the extract table activity. The extract table activity will then look at the scope, find anything that looks kind of like a table, and this one does, so we can click it, and that will output that data into, uh, let's call it DT cars. So uh, if I, let's see, what can we do? We can do a message box. So we can do DT cars rows count. There are two string in the table, right? So let's try and run this and see if, if that gets anything. I really hope so. And it returns 14. Now let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it actually found all of the cars in the table. Let's do another thing. Let's pause the execution right here before the message box by setting a breakpoint. And then debug again. And now it breaks once it has sort of gone through the table. And now because we're in break mode, in here in the watch uh, window, we can type in DT cars, hit enter, and that will actually show us the data that is inside this table. So this is just another example of how computer vision can really help you extract data from places where you normally maybe couldn't get to it. Again, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. In the event that you run into something that simply will not work, for example, if I insert a CV click activity before the extract table activity, and I want to indicate some, something on the scope, and for some reason it's just not detecting what I want to work with, let's pretend that this Toyota Prius uh, was a button and it wouldn't detect it. What I can do over here in the CV click tool uh, pane is I can click this button where I can report an unidentified element. And what that'll let me do is it'll let me draw a box around something. And then if I click OK, I'm not going to do that. It will submit this information to UiPath so that they can improve the algorithm for identifying elements that you might want to interact with. And then somewhere down the road in a week or a month or six months, the machine learning engine that is behind all of this will have improved and you might be able to work with the Toyota Prius button that we just invented. Now, a lot of people have done this already, so you'll be surprised at how much stuff you can interact with when using computer vision. Now, this was just an intro. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. There's more videos coming out soon. Um, and stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.